Hello everyone and welcome to our introductory lesson on the subject of public international law. What we're going to do in this lesson is ask the question, what is international law, before outlining the scope of this series of lessons for the future and talking about what we're going to be studying within public international law uh, as time goes on. This is our first subject lesson on public international law. I'm going to emphasize the word public in public international law because, of course, there is a distinction between the public and the private. And we'll make a look and we'll take a look at what this distinction actually entails in a second. We're going to take an introduction to the subject of, of PIL in this lesson, define what international law is, define the importance of it and look at the distinction between public and private. So what is international law? Uh, it's an interesting question because it is sometimes referred to as the law of nations. Um, essentially, what international law is, and at least public international law is, it is the legal regulation and codification of norms which attempt to regulate uh, the relationship between states. So we understand the idea within the sort of geopolitical perspective and the sort of uh, international relations realm of states, uh, the idea of a, of a country or a state itself, um, something having statehood. What are the rules and principles which regulates the relationship between these states? What happens where there may be a dispute between two states? What happens where one state uh, tries to go to war against another state? Can they do so legally? All of these things are questions for international law. It is essentially the legal regulation for how states interact with each other. I refer to the prefix inter in this sentence here, in international law, because what this means is it is the law between states, not necessarily the law which derives out of the sovereign authority of states. OK, so. We can talk about the fact that we're talking outside of the sovereign jurisdiction of states themselves and talking about the things that relate between those sovereign jurisdictions. Now, this isn't to suggest that international law doesn't have principles which derive out of the sovereign jurisdictions of states. And we'll get to looking at some of those in the future. But just that international law itself regulates uh, the relationship between sovereign states. They do not regulate the inner workings of sovereign states per se. So this brings into question about whether or not international law should even be considered law in the first place. And this is a debate that is had quite often in jurisprudence. And depending on which type of jurisprudential theory you adopt, um, or even which type of uh, positivist uh, jurisprudential theory you adopt, will actually uh, conclude on the answer to this question. According to some schools of thought, specifically within the positivist movement, for example, Austinian positivism, International law cannot be considered law because it does not have its sources deriving from the sovereign authority of a state. Law is derived from the sovereign, according to people such as John Austin. And so as a result of this, because there is no sovereign within international law, because what international law does is regulate the relationship between sovereigns, it means that it cannot be considered to be law. Now, instead, we could say that international law is understood as a common relationship or the common understanding between states about the correct course of conduct. Now, I'm going to uh, talk about the fact that without speaking personally of what I believe, whether or not international law is law, there is definitely a subject matter which we call international law. And there is a vast amount of literature on this subject matter. Now, I'm not going to speak personally about whether I think international law is law, but just so you know, um, you know, I do a PhD in international law. So that, <laughs> make from that what you will uh, on this topic. Um, but yeah, regardless of whether or not you would define it as law or even define it in the same way as the law of a state, like, for example, the law in England and Wales or the common law. It does not matter because essentially there is a subject that we call international law and there is a subject matter which is called international law. And that is the subject that we're going to be studying in this series of lessons. The purpose of this series is to provide you with an introductory examination of public international law in its generality. So generally speaking, we are also focusing on other areas of public international law on this channel, because, for example, we have lessons on international humanitarian law. We have uh, lessons on uh, the law of the sea or even international space law, all of which are areas within public international law. But they are specific topics within public international law. This subject is going to focus on international law, public international law in its generality. 
We are also not going to be talking about private international law. Public international law is the law or the rules or the common understandings, however you choose to view it, which exists between states, states as sovereign entities, and it places the state at the heart of the process of international procedure. The state is arguably the most important actor within international law. You, the only challenge to that would be international organisations, which are obviously also made up by and of states. Private international law is a separate entity, it's a separate question, because it concerns itself with the question of jurisdiction, the question of whether or not a court may have jurisdiction over a particular matter owing to the fact that some matters may cross borders. So you might have private international law where we're talking about the legal regulation that is done within states about a matter or a fact or an issue which crosses international borders. We sometimes refer, this, uh, refer to this as conflict of laws, trying to work out which law um, and which jurisdiction is the correct jurisdiction to apply the law in a particular issue. So with that being said, the fact that we are talking about public international law in its generality, and also the fact that we are not talking about private international law, what are we going to be studying in this series of lessons? Well, because it, we are talking about the general form of international law, we're not going to be covering issues and subjects which are still public international law, but merit their own series of lessons. So, like I said, this series is not going to talk about the laws of war, or international law on the use of force, or even international criminal law. These are all specialised topics within the broader subject of public international law. So let's think about what we're going to be covering in this series. The first topic is going to look at an introduction and also, uh, importantly, a history of international law, how international law has developed over the years and come to be known at how it is to this day. We'll talk about the development in history, including um, key ideas uh, uh, such as the origins of public international law, the work of people like Hugo Gre uh, Grotius and, 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 and Vittel, talk about the impact of the two world wars on the international order and the establishment of arguably the most important factor within international law today, of course, the establishment of the United Nations. We'll also talk a little bit about theories of international law, diving ever so slightly into international legal theory. This includes looking at subjects such as legal positivism, natural law theory of international law, the third world approach to international law, as well as some other alternative theories. This is going to be done with the view that we are not going to be talking in too much detail about international legal theory, because that can be a series of lessons in and of itself, the philosophy of international law, if you will. The second topic is going to focus on the formal sources of international law. We'll talk about where public international law comes from. This involves a, an introductory look on the law of treaties, uh, an examination of custom, international custom or customary international law, as well as general principles and case decisions. We'll also think about some of the key principles which pertain to the international legal sources. So looking at, for example, the doctrines of Ergo Omnes, Jus Cogens and Opinio Juris, all uh, important for those who are studying international law. Topic three, we'll talk about the concept of statehood. We'll look at the requirements for a state, which involves examining the Montevideo Convention, as well as the relationship between states and international organisations, as well as uh, non-governmental organisations as well, and their influence over the uh, sphere of public international law. Topic four, we'll examine jurisdiction. We'll talk about the distinction between territorial and ext extraterritorial jurisdiction, the idea of active versus passive nationality, and then the universal concept of universal jurisdiction. And then finally, in topic five, we'll talk about state responsibility, the idea of state responsibility, the impact and the responsibility of private persons within public international law, as well as this concept of state attribution. So I hope you enjoy this lesson and I hope you stay tuned for the future lessons in this particular series. And I also hope you stay tuned for all of the other lessons that we're doing on the International Law Academy, including uh, international law of the sea, international space law, international humanitarian law, as well as investment law and trade law. Uh, and there'll be many, many more in the future as well.